Soul Eater is one of those works with a standout style. Uh, much like Bleach, Berserk, One Piece, and other great artworks, it's managed to develop its own unique way of interpreting human anatomy into a simple form in order to tell a story. Now, the artworks, in my opinion, aren't as amazing as the Bleach or the Berserk or uh, Yusuke Murata's uh, artwork, but I think Okubo does a really great job of giving a story a visual identity with his art style. Soul Leader was published in 2004, and it went on to about uh, 2013, I think. And in that nine years, you can see that Asushi improved drastically. But I think that in that, he kind of lost uh, the style that made his uh, Soul Leader a bit unique. Now, on the left uh, is a page from the first few volumes. Uh, the tones are very simple, as you can tell. The exaggeration of the anatomy, uh, that reflects you know the mood and the theme of the story very well um the tones are very nice and simple and you can easily tell it's dark out um, and i think it just it, it really matches the anime as well and then when you look on the right that's from the his last few volumes of uh, soul eater and i mean the art is great the art is phenomenal and it's amazing to look at uh, i think that anatomy is done very well you can tell that he's improved drastically um, but i think it just it lost it loses a little bit of uh, that uniqueness that it had that it came in with in 2005 okubo came back with another work fire force now i know a lot of you have heard of it uh, especially recently because of the anime and i think the anime does a great job of animation and grabbing new people you know who are in it beginning to get into the genre now the artwork for the manga is really nice uh, i love the weird amount of details he's able to put into scenes or characters and the improvement uh is really evident and you can see how well it carries over from fire force one major thing that i really like and that is noticeable to me personally is the tone change that are in the pages my guess is because it's about fire and since uh, fire is bright naturally you know that means that there will be less darks and I think that he does a really great job of um, amplifying that by leaving a lot of you know pages and scenes and panels white uh, he'll draw the characters but then he'll leave a bunch of the scenes white which I think does a really great job of illuminating that fire effect so in today's video I'm going to be trying my best to replicate one of the Soul Eater panels or pages. Um, this is uh, from one of his last volumes of Soul Eater, um, and it's Maka going her final form, per se, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what do you want to call it, but uh, now this has to be like one of the hardest pages I've ever had to do because if you know me and if you know my art style, it's very scrappy and scratchy. Uh, it's a lot like Mob Psycho or uh, Chainsaw Man, I guess, in a way. So honestly, like when I was trying to ink this, I had no clue how he was able to get those smooth flat lines. Um, I had to keep erasing and going back, uh, <laughs> trying to do it again, just to try to get it right. Um, the folding of the clothes, the dress was weird for me, so I had to just try to uh, branch off and do it my own way. Now, if you know, I'm not 100% trying to mimic the whole page. I'm just trying to learn from it and try to get the essence of it. Um, and as you can see, his lines are a lot more thicker. So after the line art, I went over it and uh, added the blacks in uh, for the eyes, for the dress and this this was a really cool uh, part how he did it um and with the tone that he had with the screen tone of the dress i thought it just looked really nice um, this might be a technique i might use later on um, but i like to keep my artworks really simple so i might not but it it's in the back of my mind now uh, especially because it came out really well so again i'm going over the shadows um, so the light would be reflecting from my right side or our right side and onto her left side um, So the shadows would come up from our left side um, So yeah, 
And then I don't know what they're called, but the little dashes that artists use, uh, comic book artists especially, uh, like right there. Those are pretty cool. So I noticed he started adding those later on in his career, um, which is which gives it a little more depth um, when it comes to identifying shadows, which is a really cool touch, especially when you add screen tones to it. Um, so yeah, and then going over the eyes, the shoes, Here I'm just touching up uh, more of the line art. I really like how he does the eyes right here, which is the downstrokes on the pen. Those are really cool. And then here comes the scythe. Now the scythe, his was uh, obviously a lot better and well done compared to mine. Um, and I'm just, this whole thing took me less than, or a little over an hour, so I didn't really have time to really detail it and scale everything properly. Uh, I just had to go over it just quickly. <laughs> Just to try to you know record something um but i really appreciate the downstrokes he does like right there on the ears and the eyes i think those bring a nice a layer of uh depth especially for someone who doesn't use screen tone like me i think that might be a technique that i'll definitely take away and use um and i think this is uh this is the reason why we try to study other artists you know just to learn and pick up skills like that here I'm going over the finishing touches, uh, just editing out her eyes because mine looks <laughs> really weird compared to the originals. Um, the eyes were just a little too big on mine. And then I'm adding a little bit of the uh, damage lines or the scratches on her face and stuff. The little details, um, you know, that was needed to finish out the pages. And then the site was really... Uh, I couldn't, I, I'm new to Paint Studio, so I'm not sure how to get the curved lines, uh, how some people might do it, so I had to do it manually by myself. Um, so yeah, it's not really all the way curved and cleanly curved, I guess. So everything's by hand, so it just looks a little weird. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool scythe design, I guess. And that's one of the things he, I appreciate about his artwork and his designs. I think the use of scythe uh, his idea of a site, of a proper site, I guess, it, of a customizable site. I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. So right here, I'm just adding the um, the smoke effect. Now on the original pages, his lines are a lot more smoother, and you could tell that it flows. The little effect that he does. The little wind effect or whatever you want to call it really flows as uh, it's really smooth and uh, it flows around Maka well and um, and the lines are much thicker compared to mine so I think that's one thing I gotta I gotta work on um, I think line variation uh, he has a very good understanding of it uh, especially in this pages as you can see especially compared to his uh, you know his later work compared to his earlier work I think he, he's, he's gotten much better at having different sizes and lines um, and that's something I need to practice on so that's something uh, to be taken away from this experience here I'm just going over the screen tone which is my favorite part because it means I'm almost done <laughs> so her dress uh, has like two or three different layers the first layer of screen tone uh, I think he uses only two screen tones uh, for this page so the first is for the top of the panel which is just one simple tone and then the other tone is for the dress um, now he uses a darker tone for the dress and in the anime this this scene was in an anime but i think uh, she had like a dark she wears a lot of darker red tint so i'm, I'm assuming the dress is supposed to be like a darker red uh, if that's the case then i think this is a really good choice in tone Here, with the little effects that's going around Maka, I wasn't able to, <laughs> I'm new to Clip Studio, so I, I, I couldn't figure out, you know, which brushes to use yet. So I was just trying to like, uh, go with two layers, uh, one over another, multiply, uh, yeah.
so yeah here's the finished product on the right is the original artwork which is phenomenal it's really nice to look at super professional uh, everything is nice the pose is dynamic and it you know the little wind effect around her is super dynamic as well it's smooth it flows well um, and then on the left is my uh, ver version of that um, and one major thing that I noticed is the thickness of the line. I don't think my lines were as thick as the original ones. Uh, the scaling was a little off because um, the bottom panel Maka is like, my version of Maka is, is like super skinny, super small compared to the right one. I think she makes more of an impact on the right one. Um, but again, I'm just trying to, you know, just draw a quick variation of this, trying to learn uh, as much as I can from the techniques that the artist might have used. Um, and I can see, you know, a lot of great things. Uh, but yeah, so that's my version of this art. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this was, again, one of the hardest things I had to do when it comes to drawing because of the quality of the lines. <laughs> I think it was just way too clean for my taste. I, I can't do like super clean line art. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to subscribe, be sure to like, I show some support. Uh, because it helps not only you know motivate me to make more videos but uh, quality videos uh, be sure to follow me on instagram and be sure to go read garbage trash it's on webtoons free to read uh we're, or i'm currently working on chapter four but yeah i think that's about it hope you guys enjoyed the video and hope you guys have a good day <laughs> all right i'm out